Okay, Steph and Miles, let's mute everyone right now. They can, they can come off mute later so that we don't uh, wreck the call. Okay, thanks everyone for being on the call. I'm Monica Rounds. I'm excited to talk to you. We're going to talk about five core foundational playbooks. There's about 21 to 30 playbooks, but I'm going to give you the first five because if I was coming to your office today, I wonder if you would scramble to try to find five playbooks that you have put together. So today we'll give you an insight on how to build those. So let's go to the next slide, Stephanie. So I have been coaching more agents than anyone in the country. I have the title of coaching more teams and assistants than anyone in the country. Um, I have ran a seventh level team where the Rainmaker never came in. And I took the listings and ran the team and he netted a million dollars every year and never walked in. And it's all about the systems. It's all about the. Okay, Stephanie, you muted me too. So I'm not sure where I left off. But anyway, I ran a seventh level team. I took the listings. That person made a million dollars every year without walking in the building for seven years, netted that. Um, I worked for Dave Ramsey for a total of five years, I built his endorsed local provider program. That was always fun. So I come with a lot of experience. So on the next slide, I want to share something with you that is a simple concept to understand. Champions are champions. Not because they do anything extraordinary, but because they do the ordinary things better than anyone. Think about Michael Jordan. Think about Stephen Curry. Think about, you know, your favorite football player. Think about Tom Brady. It's not my favorite, but he did the basics better than anyone. You know, when it comes to being a quarterback, when you think about it, you know, let's really think through. What are the basics? And so I'm going to give you five basic playbooks. Are there more? Are there more in-depth ones? Sure, but in, I didn't cover lead generation. I need to get you the basic ones first. So with that said, let's go on to the next slide. So communication is a key, and you have to over-communicate to your clients. And if you're building a team and you have a team, I'm going to show you a couple of reports. So when you come to the training that I do on the perfect real estate assistant, which is one call for the agents per month, and it's two calls for the assistant, you will understand that you can't over-communicate to a client. That client paid six, 7% of the value of their home, and you have to communicate with them on a regular basis. So it, it floors most assistants and agents when I say, call them every day. I've got the scripts. It's just a fast-paced, quick call. You don't get them all the time. But the trust bridge is built so strong when you call and your assistant says, hi, it's Stephanie with Monica Reynolds' office. Do you have a minute? Great. Monica, let me touch base to just see how things are going. Did the sign go up yesterday? Great. Is it in the right spot? Terrific. I'm so glad to hear that. I'll report back to Monica. It's those simple things that build that trust bridge. So the Friday report, team communication, goals. This is all about that. So let's go to the next slide. And on the next slide, this is the Friday report. Now I talk fast. You're going to, you can get the recording. You can listen to it. And I got 30 minutes to go through about 30 slides here. So we go fast. So Friday team member report. Now this is what I learned from the great Dave Ramsey organization. When I worked there, five things I accomplished to move the business forward week of the week. So you said, what are the five things you accomplished this week? Who doesn't want that for a buyer agent? Who doesn't want that for an assistant? And by the way, it'd be good if you filled it out too. Week high, week low. And then I added, what did you do to wow a customer? How did you improve that customer experience so that they're not just a file? They're not just a buyer. They're not just a closing. They're not just a listing. What did you do to wow that customer? So communication, you've got to have systems on how you communicate. Most importantly, you better cover yourself with a communication log. And it's interesting to me to see how many times we reach out to a client, you know, in the, the action required, the remarks, left a message, no answer. And all of a sudden, if you see that we're calling and the client's not picking up the phone, you got to circle in on them on different times. You've got to make that connection. No one cancels a listing or a contract by saying, you guys call too much. It's more like, well, I haven't heard from you guys. What are you doing? So communication, go to the next slide. 
So talking about building a team, whether you're an agent without a team yet, you haven't hired your first assistant, the calls that I do that start in two weeks are for agents. 40% of the calls are agents who haven't hired an assistant because you need the systems, you need the hiring. Now, looking at this in communication, you need a weekly team meetings. Now, what's not on here is you're going to have a daily huddle. You need a monthly team meeting. Client communication to the client is daily, setting expectations of what's going to happen next, what's going to happen next. Call, email, call. They only hear 25% of what is said because they're going to move. They're moving. They don't hear everything. Their mind is all over the place. So it's call them, tell them what you said, email them, then call them the next day and say, do you have any questions about what we covered, what the next step is? So those are all very methodical communication things. Team meetings, all of this is written out as far as we do a book once a month. And sometimes it takes two months to get through with each chapter. And each person takes over a chapter and teaches the team what they learned. Year in business planning meeting coming up. It should be scheduled in October. There is in all of this in communication, this is part of the playbook. Now, there is a daily huddle with your assistant for 15 minutes at 11 o'clock after you've done your dollar producing activities, which is lead generation. And so what I want you to hear loud and clear is there's no such thing as over communication. There is a thing called death by meeting. So my weekly meetings are only 30 minutes. My monthly meeting is 45 minutes. The year in business planning meeting is five hours. It's not two days, three days or whatever, right? Okay, let's go to the next slide. So when you look at the next slide, this one is playbook number two. So you want to be focused on a listing playbook. So it's a communication. What do you have going for communication? Start manualizing everything. Start putting it in one file somewhere. Playbook number two is you take a listing. Do you have a pre-list package? Do you have a checklist? Do you, If you have an assistant, are you passing the file correctly? Do you have a showing form script? Do not be using Zillow's showing desk or whatever that thing is because they've got your client information. Stop doing that. I'll share with you what's coming up and that's going to be real helpful for you. Do you have a price improvement checklist and forms for that? How do you handle all incoming phone calls on the listing? I have all the scripts, all of the, all the setting expectations, what's going to happen next. So when you go to the next slide, I'm going to share with you, pass the baton. So when an agent gives someone the file, your assistant, you never just say, hey, list it. They're ready to sell. You need to find out the motivation. Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they losing their house? Are they lose, lost their job? Did they get a promotion? You know, what's going on? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? They don't have kids. They have a dog named Tank. Tank's a 250 pound Rottweiler that has a TV and watches dog TV all day on his couch and he has a bedroom. Now, here's customer service. The assistant goes, do you have any pets on the premise? Here's customer experience. Mr. Johnson, I hear you have a great family member named Tank. That's going to be fun to meet Tank sometime. Okay, so that's the, the difference. And yet you can't let them call if somebody's died in the family, if somebody's getting divorced. You got to know how to tone it back. And then you got to discuss the personality styles and you guys should know by now when you're in front of someone who's a high D, well, what's the bottom line? You know, if they're a high I, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Or they're an S. You got to know what that personality style is because you've got to speak that language. When the assistant gets the file, they've got one hour to make a contact, communication, communicating. They may not be able to spend the time on the phone at that time for various reasons, but they say, can we set a time to talk this afternoon? You've got to have that done. Then when you look at the next slide, so here's my feedback questionnaire. If you're using a service, stop doing it. The best way to absolutely, there's a lot of different things here. So when an agent shows your property, your assistant should go after them hard and strong and basically says, hey, you know, I'm Stephanie with Monica Reynolds office. She thanks you so much for showing that property. Do you have one minute? I got three fast questions for you. Would your client like to buy the house? No. What would it take for your client to make an offer? 
The house has to move. It backs up to the freeway. They do not, will not ever get near a freeway again. They've done that before. We value your opinion. What price do you think the property will sell for? Oh, $25,000 less. You got to make a difference on that freeway noise. That's how you deliver to, to the seller. You say, I've got the information, the feedback. Um, you know, it's not going to be pretty because they're giving you a price that's lower and they made an adjustment for the freeway noise. This is all helpful stuff, but your assistant is going to be trained in my class on how to do that. And that's a very simple thing. Plus, is this a person you'd want to hire as a buyer agent? Is this a person you want to recruit for Keller Williams? Just saying. Okay. Assembling your playbooks. All right. So on the listing playbook, this is going to be a little daunting. We'll go to the next slide, Stephanie. Thank you. Now, you would think that would be enough. So I'm going to share with you the playbook that I deliver during Perfect Real Estate Assistant. Can you imagine hiring an assistant or your first assistant that's going to be a listing manager? And this person is going to put together a bulletproof system. On the listings, it's bulletproof. It's bulletproof from the pre-qualifying questions to the pre-list package to the CMA to the appointment file cover. I give you a pre-list package. However, you can get one on command too. And so when you go to the next slide, like I said, I don't want a daunting, but this is a listing playbook. The next slide will show you there's 42 different items. And if you look at the bottom, you'll see short sale REO checklist. Uh, congratulations, your home is sold, list of Friday listing report. Everything is in there that your assistant, that look at number 24, first 21 days of communication for your assistant. Listen to this. There's no secrets to real estate. I've been in real estate 44 years. I've built the systems and I've built the playbooks that are plug and play. When you have your systems, you can build a duplicatable and scalable business very easily. You can deliver customer service that magically builds that customer for life with repeat and referral business. So if you look at the next slide, we're going to go to, remember I go fast. And so just to give you an idea, the closings. Now, this is where the customer moves forward or not. You could have done a great job showing them houses and negotiated an incredible offer. You could have done a great job on the listing and got them overpriced and it's a perfect buy for their home, et cetera. Took the pictures three times. You did everything to make them happy. This is where it happens. This is where the relationship goes forward or not. And so I say they're paying 6% or they're your future sellers because they just bought a house. You have to over communicate. So you call them every day and some of you are going, well, that's not, that's just not doable. If you have more than 20 listings or you have more than 20 transactions a month, yeah, you probably need to divide that up a bit. But if you've got less than 10, it's not that hard to do. It's not that hard to do, but you have to set these expectations. And so when you're looking at the closing systems, and if I was going to come to your office today and I'd say, okay, what are your closing systems? Show me what you have. Show me what you're doing. Show me what you have that is that if I you were going to train me that's duplicatable and scalable. And what is my training on this? Okay. So if you go to the next slide, okay, you will see taking time to ensure a smooth transition. There's a system of passing the baton on the next slide, Steph. Thanks. You know, congratulations, John, you have purchased a home. Do you have two minutes? I really appreciate working with you. Now, this is the buyer agent. Passes the baton to the TC instead of, hi, I'm Stephanie with Monica's office. Congratulations, your home sold. I'll be working with you. Who are you? Why am I working with you? Well, I was working with so-and-so. They were my agent. Oh, I'm working with you now. So you set it up correctly. That's a playbook system. And so it's all about the customer experience. You just can't have somebody else show up on the transaction now. You got to pass the baton. So the scripts are there. You know, and the key thing that I'm really helping all of you understand is you put the systems together. I love these AI assistants. That's great. Okay, next one. All right. Okay. Setting expectations for closings. This is the next one. 
So when you have an assistant or yourself building the playbooks, remember a lot of agents don't have an assistant. So the perfect real estate assistant is for you because you don't have an assistant, you are one and you need the systems for when you're ready to hire someone. So you're, you're, you're telling the seller, you know, or the buyer, you know, there's a couple of things that we look for, you know, and I say, I want to set the expectations with you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, the things we're looking for are structural damage, anything that we need to repair. We're definitely looking for any health hazards and we're looking for code violations. Every inspector will find a crooked light fixture or light switch. They're going to find a switch that doesn't work. We expect those in any home, even in brand new homes. We're looking for these things specifically. So I'm setting them up that we're not going to have 42 items on the fix this list. They're not buying a perfect home and they didn't pay a perfect price, right? Those days are gone right now. Playbook number four. All right. On playbook number four, so we've talked about the communication, the listing, and the pending. Remember, I say there's 21 playbooks. I'm giving you the five you need to focus on right now. And when you come to the class, you get all of them, correct? So playbook number four is database tracking and numbers. So when you look at, you have to track your appointments. That's the number one thing you track each week. Some of you are going, well, no, I got to track closings. Well, yeah, you should. It's the appointments. It's the number one thing you track. And why is that? Because if you don't have the activities, you don't have the appointments. You don't have the appointments. You don't have the listings. You don't have the buyer that you're showing property to. You don't have the closings. So it's all about the appointments that you track first. And so you're tracking, of course, you know, any buyer appointments you had, listing appointments, listings taken, buyer sales, buyer under contract, buyer broker agreements, how many in your database, how many completes, name, address, phone number, and email. So your business is a math equation. How many contacts do you need to make to get a listing appointment? How many contacts to a listing taken? Two different numbers. So let's say it's 100 contacts to a listing appointment. It's 150 contacts to a listing taken, meaning you're not going to take all the listings you go out on. Sometimes you have to circle back on them or they're not quite ready or you didn't pre-qualify them from the listing playbook like you should have, right? So monthly marketing plan, smart plan, opportunities. If you aren't using opportunities in command, go figure that out today. It's so simple. I even figured it out. You know, you've got to run a P&L. You've got to track sources of business. And again, all these things are in depth. What I'm doing today is sharing with you what you need to be looking at and start to manualize or start to put it in a digital file somewhere. You're building your book of business. You're building your playbooks that are plug and play. If you want to hire one assistant and leave it at that, I applaud you. You will be super successful. You will be profitable. If you look at a long term and building a team and changing lives and you want to go seventh level, you've got to start somewhere with the playbooks. OK, if you looked at the next one, this is literally our office board. And you can use, you know, depending on where you're going to put it. But we had a whiteboard going to the next slide, Stephanie. And you can also, without, you know, you can get whiteboard paint and you can do it with black tape and you can put it on the wall. But this was a monthly one. Offers that were out there, appointments, sold, pending, closed. Down at the bottom was the personnel in and out. I had a team of 12. It wasn't that big of a deal, but we need to know where people were. Listing expired, canceled, deals fell through. Employee of the week, quote of the week, word for the day price reduction. So you could, I could walk in my office at any time and I could see what was happening because it was real time. If we went on an appointment, it went on the board. If we took a listing, it went on the board. If we closed something, it went on the board. It was in real time. So everybody knew where we were at. When you want strong accountability, you have a board like that. You can even put it on a piece of paper and break it out into three or four pieces of paper, but you need to have that kind of accountability. Okay. The next slide. So this has been kicking around for the dark ages when I put this together, I don't even know, in the 70s or 80s, I don't know, it's a million years ago, probably before a lot of you were born. But every time I made a call, I'd make a slash mark. And if you, you can't see it very well, but it says number of leads, number of appointments, uh, gone on number of listings taken, buyer showings, buyer control sales, listings under contract, 
paid income. So it was a daily report. And I, as I, my team grew, I had everyone do this form and Stephanie would go on Fridays, take the form off of their desk, which was typed, taped down because they get legs and they disappear. We taped them down and then she'd pull off that one and put another one on. So Stephanie's on this call running the slides for me. We worked together 13 years now. So the key thing on all of this is that you have to have accountability of what those activities are. And so one of the things in going back to this playbook is that this playbook is database and tracking numbers. You want to build a performance culture. And the way to only build a performance culture is to track the activities. Now, the next slide, okay? On the next slide, it says tracking the growth of your database. This is your only asset. You better be paying attention to it and you better be growing. I was just listening. I, I grade some of the coaches' calls with maps. And this one client says, I don't need to grow my database. I got enough people. Well, you might and you might not. But I mean, th wh what kind of thinking is that? Expand your mindset on that. You need to grow it three per day per Gary Keller. You know, and you need to tag certain things. Senior citizens right now are on the move. 70% of most listings around the country are somebody 60 years and older. They have equity. They have cash. They have flexibility. They're moving around. So you should have a tag in your database that says senior citizen when you know that they're over 60. You should have a tag that says um, out of area owner or absentee owner, past client, SOI you know, vendor tag, uh, agents, if you're going to, you know, network and obviously get referrals from around the country, that's critical. Okay, so that's important. Next slide, Stephanie. So the next slide is what are your five sources of business? Here's where we get a little goofy. You have to focus on five sources of business. Now, when you come to the call, I give you a probate package. Well, that's a sustainable business. Divorce, I give you a senior transition package. I give you an open house package, all of these things are sustainable pieces of business. You know, when you look at expires and fizzbos, they come and go, probably coming more now. Past client, that's always a sustainable part of your business. Now, if you notice there, referrals is not in there because there's five types of referrals. There's an agent referral, which should be in here, agent referral, but these are different categories. There's a team referral from your assistant, Vendor referral from the people who live off of your merits, right? SOI referral is different than a past client referral. So there's five types of referrals that you should focus on. But you have to get clear and drill down into those. So each one of these, you get a package when you come to my class, and each one of these are spelled out. Now, you may not be using the expired package right now because there aren't very many expires or whatever, but you're ready to go if you were to use those, okay? And then let's go to the last playbook, Stephanie, playbook number five. So customer for life, hosting client events, making the most of referrals, the promise. The promise script basically is that you're getting one referral during the transaction of that current client. Whether it's they're a buyer, they're a seller, they're going through a process with you, you're getting one referral before they leave from their sphere of influence. And so, you know, you can consider a newsletter. There's all kinds of formats that you can get for that. But what are you doing to create a raving fan? MMFI on the left there stands for make me feel important. You have to have a system where you are emailing them once a month. You are making sure that you do at least four client experience uh, parties for them. You're making four one a quarter, you're making sure that you're sending a video a month, you're making sure that you're sending something of value in those emails. And then I totally believe in Thanksgiving cards. Everybody gets a Christmas card from their gardener, whoever. Why not send them a, a Thanksgiving card? Hardly anybody sends those out. I think those are powerful. And so when you look at these things, what are you doing to stay in touch? Who are your VPs? So who are the 25 clients who have done multiple transactions with you or have given you referrals or could be an influencer who could give you 
opportunities and you're not paying attention to them. Maybe you do a holiday brunch. So every December, the first Saturday, I would do a holiday brunch. Before you go shopping, stop at, and I usually had a nice hotel with a nice room. We had a buffet breakfast and mimosas, whatever. Come, come have a, we have a Christmas gift goodie bag for you and come have brunch and then go out and shop. And so we did that. And that was for my top clients. And you can never say thank you enough to anyone. So there's whole systems for that too, right? Okay, if you go to the next slide, customer for life, event ideas, pie giveaways, family pet portraits, charitable events, movie night, fall festivals, pumpkin patch. You guys have heard them all. Well, what latest one I heard, which was hilarious, is a yappy hour. Y-A-P-P-Y, yappy hour. You bring your dog. It's a happy hour, but it's a yappy hour. You bring your dog, your cat dressed up and it's a contest. I thought that was pretty funny. And yet again, it's these opportunities to see people in connection. It's all about relationships. Now you can have a relationship and say, well, we closed our house. We did a great job. That's it. Then they go off and play tennis with somebody and have lunch with someone who sells two houses a year. They got a relationship. So be careful, be careful, be careful. It's a time now to shore up your business. You know, there's all kinds of virtual ideas and things like that too. So on the next slide, the promise script. So basically, you know, this is from Mike Hicks, H-I-C-K-S uh, from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And I've got permission to use it. And he's talked about it, Gary's Masterminds and things like that. But basically you're saying on a scale of one to 10, Mr. Seller, I want to deliver a 10 plus experience. We know it's real estate. We know it's people. However, we want to do our best and we're going to over communicate with you. During our time together, I just asked for one thing. Can you find one buyer or seller so I can have another great client like you? So that's basically it paraphrased. Okay. But if you don't ask, you don't get. So how many of you on this call ask client every single time? that you're working with for a referral. All right, let's go to the next slide. Repeat and referral business. Train your assistant and train yourself when you're talking to a client. By the way, thanks for working with our team. We so appreciate your business. Can I ask you a favor? Our business is based on referrals from great people like you. Can you think of anyone thinking about buying or selling? I'd love for you to think about that. You know, could you, you know, if you do hear of someone and you can change it up and say, families with the American dream. Could I have you help me find one family that I could help? Change it up. Do whatever you have to do, but you have to ask for it often and many times. So if you have a question, put it in the chat box. I'll do my best to answer anything right now. And so let's go to the next slide. So this is the perfect real estate assistant class. You get 450 pages of a policy and procedures manual. It starts September 13th. There's a $100 code there, Web 100, to take $100 off of the first month. It's six months. It's 450 plus pages of systems, playbooks. It's got all the packages that I talked about, the probate package, et cetera, if you want to get into those things. Um, out of area owner package, all of that expired, FISBO package, it's all done for you. One call a month is for you as a great agent to help you be a great agent. The second and third calls are for the assistance. And then, of course, I give homework on each call, et cetera. So if you're interested in that, take a look at that. I'd love to have you on those calls. They're live. I do them. Nobody else does them. I do them. And they're live. And I have about 15 minutes of Q&A at the end of each call. Every week is about 30 to 50 pages that you should print out. And it should go into a manual so that you can start to build it. The next slide is for some of you, I want it now. I want it all now. I have a two-day boot camp coming up on the next slide, Stephanie. October 3rd, or 16th and 17th. I forget my dates right here. October 16th and 17th. And that is in Austin, Texas at the headquarters at KWRI. Mo Anderson, if you're familiar with her, will be there for the two days. Linda McKissick, the number one uh, profit share earner, prime 1.8 million last year in profit share. Joe Bogart, who's coached more people at seventh level. And then Kristen Cole on the do's and don'ts of if you want to expand at some time in your future. And of course, Aaron Simons, who I worked with uh, in uh, on my team, and he averaged 175 listings taken a year. 
So it's really, really good to do that. So, all right, going back, let's, so there's that choice if you want everything done in two days. We have special pricing on that. If you go to the, Stephanie, go back to the perfect real estate assistant. Again, these are live calls. Go slide back one. These are live calls on the perfect real estate assistant starts on the 13th. That if you're not able to fly to Austin, that may be the one that you want to go to. There it comes, I think. Stephanie's going backwards. Maybe not. Maybe we just have a dark screen. <laughs> Okay, that. that didn't work okay. so well. Then okay, go to the then just take take it off right now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. You sure? I don't think no. so. Maybe no. not. <laughs> no. Just take it off, okay? Thanks. All right. Take it off. All right. So, that back works. to everybody. All right. So, if you have a question, put it in the chat box. Here's the thing. Uh the calls are on Wednesday at 12:30. It's usually the first three calls of the beginning of the month. This month, we're starting on the 13th because of, obviously, Labor Day. So we had to start a week later. I want you to hear this loud and clear. You can be super successful with one assistant. You can be super successful building a team. You have to have the playbooks. You have to have the systems. Systems allow you to build a duplicatable and scalable business. I've coached more people than anyone in the country. This is the same price that I have charged since 1980s. So it's not that it's any bigger price. It's the same price. I've never raised the price. I look forward to having you on the calls. I hope that you sign up. I definitely guarantee I can add to your business. I can add to the closings. I can add to your transactions. And I can definitely add to your repeat and referral business. Don't reinvent the wheel. I either wrote it or either stole it from the top agents I've coached, not stole it, but borrowed it and fine-tuned it, r and d it, rip off and deliver it differently or make it better, right? And so I want you to hear that really, really strong. These are systems that work. It's not like, hey, go try it. Or here's an idea. They all work. Okay, can you show the QR code for... Sign up. Okay, Steph, let's put, can you put back the slide on the sign up for Fast Track? I don't know if that's going to work. Here we go. Try. We're going to try. But if not, you can go, there's the link there for the Fast Track link. I don't think she can do it. I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, but they can, okay. They can uh, also email me, Stephanie, at MonicaReynolds.com. I'm happy to send that to you. Yeah, you're garbled up. Let me do it. So email Stephanie at MonicaReynolds.com or email me at Monica at KW.com. We'll send you the QR code. So Monica at KW.com or, or Stephanie, at, there she put it in there. And so did Miles. Okay, good. All right. The code is WEB100 when you sign oh, awesome. up with a $100 Perfect. discount. So it's web 100. Okay. Okay, everyone. I appreciate it. I know it was a 30 minute call. I go fast. I got so much to share. Give me 18 hours of your life and let me change it for you. So thanks everybody. Thanks for being on the call. I look forward to you on the calls. Web 100, all letters must be capitalized per miles. Web 100 and you get that discount. Sign up and I'll see you in two weeks on the calls. I won't disappoint you. You will build the systems that are duplicatable, scalable. You'll never be hostage to your business. Thanks, everyone. Have a great one. Talk to you soon. Bye.